Hello, my name's Ian Whitmore. I'm an artist based at Jubilee Stores in Newport. For Hullabaloo 2020, I've been asked to create a video tutorial on how to create, decorate and display paper butterflies. I focused the video on species found within the Isle of Wight biosphere, as we are lucky enough to have two thirds of the UK's 60 species found on the Isle of Wight. The video is broken into three sections, concentrating on paper folding known as origami, uh, techniques and tips on decorating your butterfly and then how to present the butterfly in a 3D box. You can find extra information about the equipment you might need and some diagrammatic instructions on the origami and the accompanying worksheets to go with this video. The first thing we're going to do is make our origami butterfly. To make origami you need a square sheet of paper. This is a post-it note size, 15cm squared and 21cm square. This is going to allow us to make our, our blanks. If you haven't got squared paper, a quick way to do it is to take an A4 sheet of paper, take the top right edge, fold across where it lines up, make a crease. This section here is now the section to trim away. That leaves us with a 21 centimetre square. I'm going to use a 15 centimetre square piece of paper to make a butterfly of this size. So we're going to fold the right hand edge across to the left, line up as neatly as you can, put in a strong crease. Open your sheet, rotate 90 degrees, again fold right to left, open up. This time we're going to take the top right and fold down to the bottom corner. You can always line up against the nail. <coughs> Open again, and if we rotate this way, then we can take the right edge across to the left. And open this up. And now we should have an X and a plus. Take the top edge of the paper and fold it over. What we're going to need to do now is this crease here is a valley fold. It needs to become a mountain fold. I'm going to bring this across. And fold this section over to the left. So on this side, <coughs> Fold across, down the centre, fold that one across. This is the most tricky part of the fold. Okay, now I take this section here, this top layer, and I'm going to fold it up to meet the top of the triangle. And the same on this side. Flip the whole thing over. Take this triangle, the top layer, and fold it until the triangle protrudes over the edge. Put in a heavy crease here. Turn it over. Fold the top down. Squeeze in the middle. Measure origami butterfly. 
So the next step after making your origami butterfly is to decorate it. So typically I might work myself from um, photography or ID cards or resource books as some examples here. I'm interested in local wildlife so I'm focusing on the Isle of Wight biosphere and the butterflies that we might find on the Isle of Wight. We have beautiful uh, fritillary on the Isle of Wight, Glanville fritillary, but it's quite a complicated wing pattern so I'm going to go for something I think I like the look of which is the marbled white. So going back to your origami butterflies, here I've made some using different colour papers. So the most appropriate colour to use for marbled white is a white background. We're not after anything photorealistic or too precise, so all I've done is started to map out with a pen some of the wing detail in this top section here, and then just take my time to colour it in. So it's a mindful activity, just using a pen to fill this one in. Another technique we could use for uh, creating a marbled white would be charcoal. So you put down a sheet of paper. Here's a blank butterfly. I'm just going to flatten it out. And this is willow charcoal. A little bit messy this, but quite fun. So I can just colour the paper. It'll be quite rough. And then using an eraser on a pencil, or rather you can start to rub back some of the area. So if I take out some area here, this will just give us like a textured paper that we can then draw onto. It's not as flat as the pen. And the wing actually, the true shape of the wing is along here. And then I can come back in and just start to map in some of the butterflies' details. There's an area you don't like. You can always hit it in with your fingertip. You can cut back into the rubber just to highlight those areas. It's got some really pretty patterns around the edge of the wing, so we could try that with the edge of the charcoal. So that might give a nice effect. So here are the two versions of the marbled white worked up a little bit more. This is the charcoal and this is the um, pen using a, a brush pen on this one. I prefer the high contrast on this one so I'm going to put my charcoal one to the side and this one will be finished off and filled in with colour. But the next stage after that is to take your origami butterfly and to mount it into a box like a display box. So you can use junk modelling, whatever you have to hand, or you could use craft boxes. These craft boxes can be bought online, um, really cheap, 50 pence a box, or you can use food packaging. What I have noticed though is that these do not fit in this size box. So I had a hunt around and I found some packaging that I thought was a better fit. So this is where a little bit of collage comes into play. This is some anaglypta wallpaper. There's the second half of the box and I've lined the inside of the box here. The idea would be to put the butterfly into this side of the box. So 
Marbled whites feed on purple flowers and particularly on thistles. So the next step was to think about creating a background. So again, a resource book here. And looking at this thistle down here, I found some collage materials and papers with a similar suite of colours. Just using crayon pencil onto pink paper, two colours of pencil. These are uh, paint test cards, paint chips. They come in a really good range of colours. If you've got any at home, then you can use these to colour match against plants. Simple biro drawing, a stem in a different colour. And then this would be the, the spines of the nettle. So I'm going to join these together, cut them out and mount them in the box. Okay, so I've roughly cut out the thistle and uh, just used some glue stick to glue it into the back. Just needs a bit more detail. Don't spend too long on it because it's going to be covered up by the um, butterfly anyway. But certainly this area here can be brought to life a little bit. Just with some purple thistles. A little bit of detail into the leaves there. So very, very dark green. Which I don't have to hand, but I have some white so we can add this silvery vein or effect in. You can spend a lot longer than I am working on your butterfly. Starting to look better. So, the next thing is to pin the butterfly into the box. Now, you can actually use some pins to mimic the effect of entomological pins used in specimens of butterflies. We don't really, don't collect butterflies anymore and pin them. We have enough of those in museums and in collections. So this is our version of doing it ourselves. These are Velcro dots. So Velcro dots or foam work really well. So we can put one of these onto the thistle. Be around here, just below the thistle. And then you need to get the second part of the velcro. You'll be able to put a butterfly in like this. For some extra effects and to recreate the body of the butterfly, you can insert some pins. Like this. I'm going to pause the video now and finish colouring this side of the butterfly and insert some pins. Then we'll come back and finish the box. So there's the butterfly with both sides of the wings done and a pin through the top which keeps the tab folded over. So it's quite smart. This is um, washi tape. It's a very very thin coloured, sometimes patterned tapes that you can get hold of. I like this wood effect and felt that a strip at the bottom underneath the butterfly might just bring it to life a little bit with the collage and then for a bit of extra nice effect I thought we could gold around the inside edge of the box with this gold foil tape
you might just reflect some light back into the box. So this is being done quite roughly. You should need two strips. To work nicely in the box, but it just it's a trick. Bounces the light back inside and gives a kind of gold edge, makes it look more important and precious. So these little additions to the box just start to to bring it to life. The background of the anaglypta, the ray sections can be um, rubbed with a little bit of pastel, be a nice effect. So there we have a 3D butterfly in a box. You can easily put some Velcro or um, sticky fix in on the back, put it onto the wall or stand it up on a shelf. Here are some other examples. This is um, a holly blue, it's a much smaller butterfly. This has been um, dusted with some pastel, wiped over some uh, crayon, pencil crayon. The background is a painted paper and there's a small section of a map of Ventnor. I'll have white map in there. This is the chalk hill blue. Some pattern paper around the inside and this time the gold foil has been used around the outer edge so it's more visible. The body of this butterfly is made up of a series of map pins and with some antennae. It's a cable tie or a, tw a, a twist with a little bit of acrylic paint but you can also use correction fluid and then there's a bird's foot trefoil and a primrose and a section of star charts. So these are just some ideas. You can start to make a little sweet. Additional butterflies, pastel and pen and this one here using some sticky vinyl.